This segment of the Indigenous Languages series was filmed in the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, situated on ancestral land on Treaty 1 territory. Robert Meitui Ashing is Anishinaabwe, raised in his people on the Lake Manitoba First Nation located in the Interlake region of Manitoba. Robert is a pipe carrier, sweat lodge keeper, and attends the annual ceremony of Sundance. Robert has also hosted warrior lodges and eagle dances, to name a few. Over the years, Robert has served his Lake Manitoba First Nation community as both a council member and as a chief. Robert was also a health director in two First Nation communities and the senior health policy analyst for the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Hello, my relatives. My traditional name is Strong Standing Red Buffalo. I'm of the Bear Clan. My English name is Robert. My family name or surname is Matwe Ashing, or as the bastardized version goes, Matwe Ashing. I just want to talk a little bit about terminology that is being used. Uh, in Canada today pertaining to identifying the original peoples of these lands, the first peoples of these lands, whether they identify as being Métis, Inuit, or First Nation. First and foremost, I often ask people the question, why are we called Indians? Who called us that? Where did that, com that, that term come from? Well, most people will be of the assumption and or the knowledge based on what they were told that it's due to the fact that back in 1492, Christopher Columbus set sail for the land that we now call India thereby finding or coming upon our people, thinking that he was in India, gave us the term Indian. And most people will agree with that, because that, that's what's been taught in most public schools. But there's a problem with that. And the problem is this. Back in 1492, the land we now call India, wasn't even known as India. It was known as Hindutistan. So how come we weren't called Hindus? Right? <laughs> well, when you think about it, Columbus, being Portuguese, had to report back to the Queen of Spain in the Spanish language, which was not his first language. And the term that he came across or, or, or wrote back to the Queen of Spain to describe these new people he found in this new world is that of Indios Duentes. 
I don't know if I'm saying that right because I'm not fluent in Spanish. But anyway, that's the term that was used. And somehow over the years, that term India Stoenta simply got shortened and changed into simply Indian, which is how we ended up with the tag Indian. Now I'm going to confuse you even more. There's been a recent Supreme Court ruling, I think it was Daniels versus Canada, if I'm not mistaken, where that Supreme Court ruling has now identified all Métis and Inuit peoples as being Indians too. Confused? Yeah, we are too. And we're not exactly sure how that's all going to play out. What we do know for sure, though, is by the government now acknowledging that the Métis and Inuit are Indian as well, that basically is saying that the federal government has a fiduciary responsibility to those people as well, along with the First Nations. Then the next term that came up was that of Aboriginal. Again, sound familiar? Where did that term come from? Well, it was borrowed from the Australian government. You've heard of the term Aborigines? Aboriginal. Now, when you look at the semantics of the English language, ab, abstract, from original. It was a term intentionally constructed and used by the Canadian government to disconnect the first and original peoples of these lands from the very land itself. That's why Aboriginal is used. And Aboriginal is also part of the Section 35 of the Canadian Constitution, which is also now inclusive of all Indian, Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people. And then, as a retort to the term Aboriginal, First Nations political leaders came up with their own term, i.e. First Nations. That's where that term came from. It's a political term, i.e. to reconnect us back to the land. We are the first peoples here. We are the First Nations here. All right, that's where First Nations came from. As time goes on, we're now dealing with a new term. Ever hear of Indigenous? Now, where did that come from? That came from UNDRIP, United Nations Indigenous Declaration of Indigenous Peoples. And it's a word, again, using English semantics to reconnect us back to the land in a part of indigenous area. Put them together, supposedly reconnects us back to the land. And that's the term being used to describe us today. Now again, the irony in all this is that we have to say 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 that we in the end, the Swiss win on Katashindaman, and the Suna Nukan is yot. Me, ye, we know who ye get to in yo. Me, ye, who be mati seek, hunche. So, for me as a First Nations person, and the nation I am a part of is that of the Anishinaabe. You may know them as the Ojibwe. Okay, it's, we're one of the bigger nations in Canada and into the United States, actually. And when you look at that term, Anishinaabe, it references the great spirit lowering a two legged, Oginisinanayaben, Anishinaabe. We have our relatives on the East Coast, the Mi'kmaq. On the West Coast, the Salish. In the northern coast, the Inuit, the Dene. Down in the south, there's numerous nations down there. 
The Suyan peoples, which again is not their term, they rather be identified with their different camps, whether the Nakoda, Lakota, Dakota, Hunkpapa, Minikaju, and the list goes on. The Cheyenne, the Arapaho, and I could go on forever. All those terms are terms they use within their own languages to self-identify. And if you were to translate them, they all mean the same thing, human beings. And to this day, nobody's asked us, who are you? Nor are they using our own terms within our own languages to identify us within their documents and government policies and structures. They're still using their colonial language to identify us. So I just wanted to throw that in there because there's a lot of confusion. I often get asked the question, how or what do you call or do we call you people? And that's how I explain it. When in doubt, ask. We'll tell you. We're not a vicious or bad or, or, or a aggressive people. Quite the contrary. We're very giving. We're very accommodating. We're always outstretching our hands, trying to help, to teach. Because we understand we're all in this together, this thing we call life, obematis. And none of us are going anywhere. The sooner we learn to understand, respect, and appreciate each other, the better off we're all going to be, and the better the future of those coming behind us will be. Because let's face it, the last 500 years, being an indigenous person has been hell. We've gone through so much and we still go through it. We have a lot of naysayers out there that tell us, oh, that all happened a long time ago. I had nothing to do with it. That's my grandparents and stuff. Why are you making me pay? It's you that continue to remind us. It's you through your ignorant arrogance. And I'm getting a little bold with my words here. But this message has to be heard. Come to our lodges. You want to learn who we are? Come to our lodges. Come to our communities. And we'll show you like we have right from day one. We'll show you how to live this, on this land in a reciprocal fashion that is respectful to all. Because the way that we've been going, we can't afford to continue on. We're right in the midst of climate change. Something our people prophesized would happen if the newcomers did not heed our warnings in how to live on this earth. And you can deny it all you want, but you're living it every day. The climate is changing and you're feeling it, you're living it. What future are you leaving your children? How you act today, what you take from the earth today, in essence, you are spending the inheritance of your children. Think of it in those terms. Hopefully that'll get you acting differently. Yes, we live in a world that's very tough to change. It's called progress. And progress can be good, but again, we have to be cautious in how we move forward because there's only one earth to us all. It blows my mind many times of how people literally spend billions of dollars looking for life or inhabitable planets out in that solar system in the event that we destroy this one. Why don't we use those resources to clean up our act here? Our great creator placed us here for a reason. If he wanted us on another planet, that's where we'd be, right? But again, that's man's arrogance. That's how powerful the mind is. Man has forgotten to listen here. Our elders always remind us, the greatest journey you will have as a human being is from here to here. I always akin it to the little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on another. You know what's right in your heart in how you should act. 
but our minds convince us of otherwise and we do things we know can be harmful to us or others because of our arrogance and our greed. We need to wake up or else we will all pay the price. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Miigwech. <laughs>